I'm Keith Olbermann and this is The Resistance. Trump's missile strike in Syria was a stunt. The heartfelt policy change, the secrecy, the element of surprise, the retaliation, the neutralization, the mission itself, a stunt. And much of the news media, and who knows how much of the public, believed every stupid word, swallowed it like mother's milk, object distraction, and they fell for it. The Trump gang publicly confirmed, confirmed, that the Russians were warned in advance per the terms of a de-confliction understanding. ABC News reports the Syrians guessed or knew far enough in advance to move personnel and equipment out of the targeted Air Force base. How in the hell could that have happened? Maybe the Russians told them? And while the Russians knew and the Syrians knew, did Congress know? Did the American people know? They didn't even tell the State Department. It was a stunt. And what do you call a stunt in which the Americans make sure the principal ally of the targeted nation knows in advance that it's coming, but our own Congress and State Department do not? Might that be called collusion with the enemy? It was a stunt, a glorified fireworks show which did nothing to impede the Assad regime from using, again, chemical weapons against its own people. It was a stunt that did nothing to impede the Trump regime from using, again, propaganda weapons against its own people. Four years ago, Trump sent out a fistful of tweets about Syria condemning exactly the stunt he just pulled in Syria. Two months before Trump's stunt, he banned refugees from Syria from coming here. So the kids and the adults who died such horrible deaths had one less place to run to because of Donald Trump. And seven days before Trump's stunt, his government said removing Assad wasn't the plan anymore. And two days before Trump's stunt, as the children still lay there choking to death, Trump blamed Barack Obama for it. And also two days before Trump's stunt, he cut U.S. contributions to the United Nations Population Fund. And last year, 48,000 pregnant women in Syria were reportedly able to deliver their babies in safety because of that funding Trump just cut. So don't tell me he had some kind of change of heart because of the video of those dying kids, because by the end of the year, more children may have died in Syria because of Donald Trump than because of Bashar al-Assad. And less than 24 hours after the last of the missiles hit the ground, the Syrians were running more missions out of that same base, bombing more people. We fired what is reported to be $94 million worth of missiles, and we didn't even put a hole in the runways. And nobody noticed, because 79 senators publicly said this stunt, this meaningless, dangerous, cynical, exploitative, bullshit stunt that didn't even slow Assad's bombers down was a good thing. And then Trump also claimed this was the plan in the first place. The reason you don't generally hit runways is that they are easy and inexpensive to quickly fix, fill in and top. Right, when you strike air bases, you never try to destroy the runways to keep the planes from taking off, do you? And the media bought all of this. One TV anchor giddily quoted Leonard Cohen lyrics about the beauty of the video of the missiles. A TV analyst said, I think Donald Trump became president of the United States last night which is exactly what another analyst on the same network said a month earlier after Trump's speech to the House and the Senate, because every time this idiot Trump doesn't crap his pants or pay one of his companies another million dollars of taxpayer money, apparently that makes him Abraham goddamn Lincoln. The retired anchormen who will not go away, and the ex-generals making TV per diem, and the war correspondents who have nothing to do if there's no war, congratulated Trump on getting away with this one without having an escalation of the conflict. And USA Today wrote about Trump's successful week and asked if he would continue his winning ways. Just like in the three years after 9-11, the news media in this country is right now suffering from a kind of journalistic post-traumatic stress disorder. Everything around them is so outside their own experience, so different and alarming and real, so existentially threatening, that none of their cliches fit anymore, and none of their default storylines work anymore, and by God, when something vaguely familiar happens, like American missiles taking off and blowing stuff up in the Middle East without congressional authorization, they all feel like the tiny little world inside the beltway, the only thing simple enough for them to digest and regurgitate and pretend they know what the hell they're talking about, they feel like that is back. That the unique nightmare of a president who has something wrong with his brain and tells you he has been in office 13 weeks when it's only been 11, he's finally pivoting, just like they predicted, into an ordinary president who just blows stuff up and they can revert to rewriting what they wrote in 2010 or 1996 or 19 goddamn 12. It was a stunt, and the media believed every stupid word, object, distraction, and they fell for it.
I need to use a graphic to fully explain the media at the moment. Swoosh, kaboom, boots on the ground, greatest generation, easy to understand. Disinformation, alleged collusion, hacking, voter registration rolls, micro-targeting, not so easy to understand. And what did those corners of the political media miss while they fell for Trump's stunt? They missed nearly four dozen tweets from Trump in 2013 and 2014, virtual messages in a bottle from the Trump of Christmas past to the Trump of Christmas present like this one. Again, to our very foolish leader, do not attack Syria. If you do, many very bad things will happen, and from that fight, the U.S. gets nothing. And they also missed all of Trump's 2017 cheerleaders in the Senate, in the House, in the media, praising him for this stunt when they condemned Obama for even proposing action four years ago. Sean Hannity, September 2013. Glad our arrogant president is enjoying his taxpayer-funded golf outing after announcing the U.S. should take military action against Syria. And in falling for it, again, much of the media missed the real lessons of Trump's serious stunt. Less than 24 hours later, what was the pro-Trump super PAC Great America, the one run by the eternal Republican Ed Rollins, a man who told me to my face that I was right, that Trump is crazy? What was that PAC doing? Fundraising off the children dead in Syria from sarin gas and off Trump's stunt. Fundraising off a stunt that accomplished nothing except to make the stupid people of this country fall for it, just like they fell for it in Iraq in 2003, and just like they'll fall for it next time, because the actual outcome of the Syrian stunt was that Trump has now learned that whenever he can convert true international outrage and heartbreak into a publicity photo op stunt, he will get applause and support and prestige and people from around the nation willing to pretend he is a president and not an unstable egomaniac. People willing to pretend he's a leader and not a charlatan who, while in the middle of being investigated for possible electoral collusion with Russia, decides it's the perfect time for something that sure looks like military collusion with Russia by staging a phony airstrike that saved no children, delivered no message, drew no line, showed no leadership, provided no hope, resolved no crisis, and did not even produce potholes in the runways. Resist. Peace.